My name's Hugh Morris. I'm a, I'm a consultant neurologist and I'm a professor of clinical neuroscience. Uh, I work at the Royal Free Hospital, the National Hospital for Neurology and at UCL. Genomics is central to neurology. So we have about 20,000 genes and a third of those genes are expressed in the brain. A lot of the complexity of the brain is determined by the expression of these different genes at different times, but also alternative splicing of the genes and the way that their, uh, their expression is regulated and controlled in the brain. That really underlies the, the complexity of the human brain and is central to understanding neurological disease. There are a number of different aspects of genomic medicine that neurologists need to be able to incorporate into day-to-day -day practice. They need to be aware of um, the possibility of, of genomic and genetic disease. And I think most neurologists are aware of this, but they need to bear this in mind for common diseases as well as the classical uh, neurogenetic diseases like HSP, Huntington's disease. And they should be aware about how to how to provide support for patients and families um, following on from genomic testing. Actually explaining the meaning of test results will be very important for, for neurologists. Also explaining penetrance, so the fact that not everybody with a gene variant will actually develop the, develop the condition. And actually understanding these um, uh, sort of basic facts about the way the variants cause disease will be important in the counselling process. This has always been done in conjunction with clinical geneticists and genetic counsellors and actually engaging their help when there are uh, challenges in interpreting or counselling patients and their families is absolutely crucial. We all carry at least 3 billion base pairs in the genome. We all carry about 500 rare variants. What that means in the clinic is that when one is faced with a genomic um, test report, there may be quite a large number of variants that come through that report in different genes. And actually our experience with this has indicated that quite often when we look at the patient's phenotype and look at the genomic data, we can quite rapidly exclude quite a lot of the variants as, as not really being likely in terms of causing the patient's condition. So the integration of the, of the neurological expertise and the genomic expertise is absolutely crucial to, to make the best use of the, of the technology and the advances that are happening at the moment. Genomics is a really exciting field. There's been a period when we've known quite a lot about the etiology of disease, but we've not been able to do much in terms of treatment. I think that's changing very rapidly. So there are a lot of trials now that are directed really towards the primary genomic cause of the disease. And although we don't yet know whether they're going to be effective, clearly the development of those trials is very much rooted in our advances in, in, uh, in, in genomic knowledge. Probably the best example of, um, of gen successful genomic treatment in neurology is the treatment for SMA, uh, spinal muscular atrophy. So SMA is a fatal um, childhood condition. Uh, usually children who are affected by type 1 SMA uh, don't live beyond two or three years. They die from respiratory failure. We know that the severity of SMA um, relates to the presence of a duplicate backup gene called the SMN2 gene. Um, what the um, therapy for SMA uh, aims to do is to upregulate um, the functional amount of the SMN2 gene and there's a therapy called nusinersin which actually has dramatic effects in babies who have SMA so those children who previously would have had a very limited life expectancy are able to walk, um, able to breathe normally, uh, able to ride a bicycle so this really has a very dramatic um, effect and there'll be more treatments to come that are based on similar, similar mechanisms and similar approaches. In fact, whole genome sequencing and um, broad-based genomic testing will enable the very rapid uh, adoption of these sorts of approaches in, in the future NHS and in future, future healthcare.